Hi there. Continuing the series about uh, the Rhodesian Bush War, we're going to switch from the conventional military and special forces to covert operations. And uh, a chap called Peter Stiff, who had served in the police, the BSAP in Rhodesia, and then moved to South Africa, he set up a publishing company and he specialised in books about Rhodesia. And he, he wrote several, and we will we'll be looking at um, a few of them. Uh, but we'll start with this one. See you in November. Rhodesia's No Holes Barred Intelligence War by Peter Stiff. And the book chronicles the activities of a former British SAS soldier who had uh, emigrated to Africa and after initially working in, in Zambia he moved down south into Rhodesia and found quite a few kindred spirits there and ended up being recruited by the CIO, the Central Intelligence Organization, which was the Rhodesian intelligence, uh, specifically to uh, carry out acts of sabotage, uh, assassination uh, and reconnaissance, which would aid the special forces activities. So because of his background, he was suited this and he, paired up with another former um, British SAS guy, Chuck Hines, and together they commenced activities. And the book chronicles quite a few of them. A lot of the names um, have been changed. The, the, main, the main chap, Taffy, is just referred to as Taffy. Uh, um, his name was Taff Bryce. Um, and since he is now dead, it's not really... Um, giving it much away to reveal that Chuck, Chuck Hines was also uh, killed during the um, Bush War. Uh, but a lot of the uh, names of some of the guys who were running him and so on uh, were changed, except for one, Ricky May, who, who was um, quite a well-known character in Rhodesian politics and intelligence. Uh, one of the... Um, operations they did was to target a terrorist leader in uh, who was living in Zambia uh, called um, Jason uh, Moyo and what they did they arranged to send a book bomb to him a Reader's Digest book bomb which uh, successfully killed him um, so this is the, the kind of um, operations they were they were getting up to uh, they had um, a contact in Zambia who uh, was uh, a, a, a white guy with his family there and he gave them logistical support there. Uh, another operation that's featured is uh, later in the in the book when he's be, he, because he's built up quite a, a database of information about Zambia He's asked to help with Operation Bastille, which was the SAS raid to kill Joshua and Coma. And they uh, went over the lake and then uh, did a vehicle mounted column using the Sable Land Rovers, which had never been used in the war. They'd been mothballed and uh, went to uh, where he was living uh, with the idea of killing him. Uh, and uh, Taff was a guide on that. Um, the raid um, could have been successful. They actually got to the target and um, uh, found out that um, Encomo had escaped. And there is a grave suspicion to this day in Rhodesian circles that he'd been tipped off. Now, many of the books we're going to talk about uh, revealed that there was a lot of suspicion about both the CIO, Central Intelligence Organization, being penetrated by uh, the SIS, British Intelligence, and also COMOPS, the Command Operations. Um, and it, it's too many suspicions to completely dismiss. There's a big school of thought that Ken Flower, who's director of the CIO, was actually um, 
an asset asset for SIS. And um, so many of the activities uh, into the external countries had been tipped off, uh, including this one where Nkomo um, uh, had left his home unexpectedly before the raiders got there. So that, that was an unfortunate thing. And then uh, another major operation that they planned was to target the other terrorist leader, uh, Robert Mugabe, during the Lancaster House uh, talks in London. And he, he was staying in the Royal Lancaster Hotel. Uh, and the idea was for TAF to introduce um, a device into the lobby of the hotel. And what they did was uh, bring cans of fruit into the country which were actually explosive they've been sealed professionally in Rhodesia and they were put into a briefcase and um, it was able to be remotely detonated and all Taffy was waiting for was the go code which was see you in November which is the title of the book and it never came so Mugabe was never assassinated there were some subsequent plans to kill him um, including by Salu Scouts uh, during the run-up to the elections and subsequently. But again, they were all um, either foiled or not allowed to go ahead by higher commands. So again, as I say, some of the operational details and names had to be changed because of um, the sensitivity at the time. But... When the book was written, it was a complete eye-opener as to the kind of operations that were being conducted. Um, the, really, very similar to the type of stuff the Israelis were getting up to, and um, you, you know, which took um, a lot of government will to, to act in this way, uh, cross-border and internationally. And as we'll see later on with some of the other books Peter Stiff um, wrote, this capability was then taken up by the South Africans. So um, really interesting book, it's still available. Uh, they actually did an updated version where some of the names were revealed and uh, some of the operational details were revealed. But um, fascinating book about um, a, a really um, little known aspect of the Bush war.